Retirement Shelters by Jesus podcast, and we are so excited that you're with us, you're watching, you're listening, you're hitting subscribe, you're hitting like, you're sharing with your friends, because that brings money in. If you want to help uh, get people off the street, you go to sheltersbyjesus.com. If you'd like to give, it's $9. We'll get somebody off the street. We also have four books out, written by the dumb hick from Skowigan, me. And they have two prices, $10 or free. And you put your name and address right there and, and tell if you want books one, two, three, or four, all of them, we'll mail them right out to you. You also can call the office at 207 474 8833 and give them your name and address there and they'll ship it. But the other thing you can do is get a tour. When you call that number, say, I'd like a tour, and you'll meet the residents, you'll see everything we have. And we're just excited about you being a part of this. So now, on to the podcast. Again, how, how is everything in the wild state of Illinois? Well, everything's pretty wild, but uh, we're hanging in there. <laughs> All right. All right. How's church? Church is doing good. Yeah, church, doing good. You know, lots, uh, you know, lot, lots of new faces starting to, starting to pick up some momentum. Praise the Lord. Yep. Amen. Amen. And uh, uh, yeah, I, I was going to ask you if you want to uh, share a little bit about how I, you and I hitched up. Uh, a lot of them don't know your story. Uh, a lot of them watch this, haven't even read my books yet. So, but you are in the foreword in book one. So yeah. would you, would you be so kind as to share what happened, how we got together and uh, all of that? Would you be willing to share that? Absolutely, would love to. It's uh, it's it's a remarkable story, um, as as if you don't know anything about remarkable stories. But uh, I heard one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, about about the time that things were really uh, happening for you, uh, we were we were losing everything here in Illinois. Um, so you know, uh, sometimes you run into hard places, or you have some people who um, you know sow strife and discord and division. Um, economic downturn, some people lose their jobs, some people leave the church. And all of a sudden, we find out that we can't make our mortgage payment. Um, so we were uh, forced to sell the church building for the bank. Um, and they were coming after my house, my personal house next. Uh, so That's now, scary. yeah, it's, it's very scary. So, um, you know, leaving the church, um, I had to move my office into my house basement, which is a basement with no windows. Um, and uh, all of the church, everything that we had had to be divided and sent to different places. Um, you know, one family would take this, another family would take that. A lot of the expensive stuff had to be left in the building. So um, mm -hmm. now we're without a church building um, and we've lost some key people. And, uh, you know, the bank, the banker said to me, well, now that you don't have a ministry here, what are you going to do with your life? I said, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to go. I'm going to go sulk in my basement, lick my wounds and say, you know, why, why have thou forsaken me? You know, Amen, brother. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, sitting in this basement, uh, feeling bad for myself. Uh, not knowing what to do next, had no idea what we were going to do. And so uh, our, our, uh, our good old uh, aunt from the great state of Connecticut said to me, hey, I'm going to be sending you something. I've got something I'm sending you. And, and of course, immediately, my mind went to a financial gift. Well, of uh, course, because, that's where mine would go. Well, <laughs> it's about I the know. only, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, well wishes and well, you know, things of that nature, are, they're all very nice, but it comes down to cold, hard cash. That's what it comes to, bro. Yep, yep. So, uh, you know, I, I watched the mail. I got this envelope in the mail and uh, I opened it up expecting to find a check or something. Instead, a CD fell out. <laughs> uh, CD with, uh, you know, uh, from a ch her church in Connecticut. And there happened to be a guest speaker who was at the church named Richard Berry. Um, I don't know if you know that guy. <laughs> yeah, that's very, you were impressed when you saw that, I'm sure. I was very impressed. And, you know, <laughs> the only thing to it was, uh, you know, this pastor was at our church. And the whole time he spoke, I was thinking I needed to send you his CD. So here it is. God bless you, et cetera, so forth. And I'll be honest with you. I got so sore 
that I didn't listen to it for weeks. I don't I, blame you. I'm not going to listen to it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'm sinking further and further into uh, depression and, yeah. and so frustrated. And uh, so finally, one day I decided, you know, I'm down in my office and I got the nudge. Listen to the CD. Listen to the CD. So mm. I popped yeah, I popped it into my CD player. And as I started listening to that CD, I began to weep. And listening to you, you share your story, I started weeping. I got wow. through to the end. I played it a second time. I wept through a second time. I played it a third time, wept through a third time. And so what began to happen is the, the Lord began to restore my hope. Um, if God can take your circumstances and do what he did with you and for you, then certainly a flunky out here in Northern Illinois like me uh, has a shot at God doing something for me as well. Well, and he that, took a dumb hit and you're a smart guy. So that, that that's kind of not equating. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, this smart guy, you know, a man of faith and power turned into paste and flour. And uh, <laughs> yeah. Boy. Things weren't going very well. So I'll tell you what we did do. We planned our whole trip uh, that coming summer. We planned the whole trip with our kids to go drive to Connecticut because you were speaking again at the church in, in Monroe, Connecticut. Right. And so we coordinated that trip so that I could go and meet you in person. Uh, and that was one of the best things I ever did was come drive to Connecticut, meet you in person. And I knew that I knew that God was up to something and didn't know what still was a long, hard process of limping along and trying to keep this church from going under altogether. We started yeah. meeting homes. We started meeting wherever we could. And we basically held the church together. And, uh, you know, I mean, you, you instantly took me under your wing and you began to encourage me to speak to me uh, as if I wasn't a failure, but that I was a bona fide legitimate minister with a call of God on my life. And uh, your words and your friendship carried me through one of the worst seasons in my life to where now, these years later, uh, we see God rebuilding. Uh, we're operating under a different name. Uh, we're in a, we're in a, uh, the Assemblies of God in our town literally gave us their building, said, here, just Praise move God. It. Praise and, God, man. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. Um, so hope was restored and God used you to keep me in the game. And that's, that was my only strategy. Just don't quit. Just don't quit. Just don't quit. If he did it for Pastor Barry, he'll do it for me. And as you shared your stories through the years, I was moved to tears every time. It was just like I had this front row seat to this. Um, and I'm still seeing where my journey's going because I'm not quite sure yet. <laughs> well, but you've been very you've been very gracious when you speak about me. I, you know, and and higher praise than I deserve, but I you know, I take it very personally as a as a friend. It means a lot. Well, your, your friendship has meant everything to me. Uh, and, you know, I mean, obviously you've, you've shared a lot of the journey, a lot of the different things that have happened. And I know that you are God's man for this hour. Now, you may not feel like it, but certainly God is doing something with you uh, and, and cha literally changing the world through you there in Skowhegan. Well, I don't know about that, but he's doing something crazy around here. That's all I know, Pastor. So... <laughs> Uh, I, I was privileged to come out to your church a couple of times and meet your folks. And uh, I, I just want to say you have a real loving bunch of people. They're, they're nice people, too. Yeah. Uh, the hard yeah. thing of it is when you were hurting, uh, part of what you didn't say was people come to pastors, come to see about buying your church. But I don't believe anybody offered to help you stay in your church, if I remember right. Is that right? Yeah, that, that's yeah, I I. Um... You know, it, it, it brings reproach on the body of Christ. I hate to say it, but we had three other churches Im immediately step forward to want to buy our building. And I, I made sure they all knew that I do not want to lose this building. I have no right. option being forced into it. And not a single one of those groups ever put their hand on my shoulder, offered to say a prayer for me. Uh, spoke a word of consolation or encouragement, nothing. And it wasn't until I met you, you did all of the above. 
you encouraged me, you prayed for me, and you loved on me. And that's what I needed. I was, I was wounded. I felt like a wounded fish <clears throat> and the sharks were circling because there was blood coming out of us. And uh, I could not believe that my own brothers and sisters in Christ wouldn't offer to pray for me. Never even mentioned it. Well, that's, that's a horrible pile of story, but I, I, I wanted just to have you share that because I think people watching this have got to understand the body of Christ has got to step up to the plate and be a united body and really care about one another, but uh, care for the hurting. And you, were, you weren't homeless, but you were hurting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Her, hurting um, and, and to the point where I didn't know how I was going to go on. And I, I don't like to talk about, you know, the depression part of it. And I don't like to talk about just being overwhelmed. Um, but it, it was a very dark place in my life. Um, I, I failed. In my mind, I failed. And there was no purpose anymore for my life. I had failed. And I couldn't figure out what God could do with me. And, you know, to, to, for these churches to come around and say, wow, you know, your loss, our gain, we're going to capitalize on your loss. And we yeah. get to benefit from your building, your property. And uh, that is a that is a travesty. Uh, I mean, it, how how is the world? What did the Lord say? The world will know that you are Christians by the love you have for one another. Well, Amen. there wasn't. <laughs> no, no. I, that's why I, I wanted you to share that, because I, I think it will encourage a lot of folks that are watching this right now, because I know there's pastors out there because of the hard times we're in right now that are probably some of them are discouraged like you are discouraged. And they need a word of encouragement, a little word of hope right now that their situation uh, is something that can make it. It has it has the, uh, the potential of making it. No matter how bad it is right now, there is potential like in yours to make it. Yes, yes. And and it took it took someone like you to just take an interest and just reach out, just reach out with a hand of encouragement, a listening ear, just sharing your story, your journey. And if if God could do it for me, because I know the dark place I was in. I I know. And yeah. and, and I, I thought that I had reached a place of no return, a point of no return. And I'm yeah. sure there are pastors who feel so overwhelmed and so discouraged. And, and really, yeah. the message is, hang in there, because God is a lot bigger and a lot more resourceful than we give him credit for. I, I appreciate you sharing that, brother. I really do. Uh, I, I have a heart for the pastors that are struggling, because I, you know, when everybody walked out on me, I know the feeling of desperation, fear, the, the feeling like you've blown it before God. Uh, here you are, a minister, and you can't hold a church together. I whether you're supposed to have those feelings or not, if people are that are watching this are going, well, I feel that way, but I I feel like if I say that publicly, I'm unspiritual because it sounds like I'm not trusting in God. Uh, and right. probably some could say that about me that I wasn't because I, I I said, where are you, Daddy? <laughs> right now. And, yeah. But I wasn't the only one because you come along and your circumstance uh, wasn't the same. Your people didn't all abandon you, but uh, the Christians around you that could have kept you afloat did. Right. Right. So you felt, you felt some of that abandonment that I felt. Oh, absolutely. It's, it is, you meant it's a scary place. It's a very scary place. Um, you know, I'll be, uh, I'll be, I'll be honest, uh, be honest with you. I mean, I, I, uh, I was, I was very weak, weak in faith. I wasn't trusting God. I was grasping at anything, Pastor. I was any life, any life raft that came by, anything that came by that I could grab onto, I would have because I was going under. I wasn't Amen. trusting. I was afraid. <laughs> so, well, I appreciate somebody else saying they were afraid. Uh, so I don't feel like I'm the only one that was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and it comes right down to it. Y you and I are human first, you know. I, I don't know what people think about pastors, but you know we are we are people. We're we're human, and, but we're we're trying to do a supernatural job, um, and it gets hard. Uh, I appreciate you stay, saying that because a lot of people look at pastors like we think we're not human, you know. Mm -hmm. So they treat they they look at us like well, if they don't think they're human, then 
I can't treat them like they're human. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Why should I come alongside them if they can walk on water? And I'll tell you what, this pastor right here can walk on water in Maine in the wintertime every winter. I can't. <laughs> I just yeah. want that on record. I can do it. Amen. Because <laughs> the, the ice has to be about two feet thick, but I can do it. Well, I'm with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, God, God is, is faithful, um, and he's faithful to all of his children. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting because you as a pastor are on the front lines. If, if there is a spiritual battle going on, then you are on the front lines. All pastors are. All ministers are. Amen. And, I mean, you know, we need, I need my, I, last night at our midweek church service, I told my congregation, I need them. I need them coming. I need them praying for me. I can't do this without them. I don't want to do it. <laughs> um, but isn't that, isn't that the way God has designed it is that we are a body. We are a family. Yes. And we don't have to always agree on every point of doctrine, truthfully. Man, I, I've been beating that horse to death. It's like uh, the denominational thing. Uh, praise God, everybody's in your denomination because you're in there because you all think alike. But when that denomination keeps you from ministering to the hurting, to the homeless, the down and out, it keeps you from coming together and doing something big for Jesus, then there's a problem with those lines being drawn. Right. That's right. And, and I think, and you and I have had many great conversations. I think the time that we're living in now, it requires us to come together. Um, Amen. We've got to unite together. The problem that we're facing is much too big. Um, and, you know, not only the homelessness, but, but the depression, uh, people being overwhelmed by life in general. The, I am amazed at how many people are dealing with anxiety, dread, and panic. Yeah. And, that is not a joke. That's serious business. Well, you see a lot of it in uh, not just as pastor, but you're chaplain with, I believe, the fire department. Am I correct? Yeah, uh, I've been the uh, police and fire chaplain uh, in our community for almost 25 years. I thought um, so. Okay. Yeah, and and it it is true. I mean, we've through the years, I've seen very very difficult circumstances, and uh, and it's really you know one of the things about the chaplaincy is that when you arrive at their home or on the scene of an accident or a fire, um, you're not there as a denominational man preaching your doctrine. I love it. I love it. Bring it. Yep. You're Bring just it. coming with compassion and love and encouragement. People don't care what church you pastor. They really Amen. don't. So and that's, that's the where key. I tell them when I'm traveling, I'm going, if, if you can love God, love your neighbor, we can hitch horses. That's right. You know, if that's the basis of us doing it together, we can do yeah. that. And that's I tell them, you know, they come to my door, the homeless come. They don't say, uh, where do you stand on charismatic? Where do you stand on Calvinism? You know, where do you stand on uh, your doctrines of when Christ is coming? They don't ask any of those questions. Yeah. They don't separate us from those people. Those things may separate us from one another. And it's sad if they do. But those guys come to my door. They have one question. Have you got some food? <laughs> That's, That's it. the question. Yeah. And, and after their bellies are full, they go, why are you doing this? And yeah. then I get a chance to say, because Jesus loves you, man. That's Jesus right. loves you. That's you know, right. he loves you with your tattoos. He loves you with your rings hanging all over you. you know, he yeah. loves you with coming out of prison. He loves you coming off the streets. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. And That's right. there's, there's nothing denominational about it. No. No. And, and the sooner the church understands that, the better off we will all be. Um, Amen. Bringing, bringing our resources together. Um, you know, and, and that's, that's what I so loved about you. One of the things that, you know, it wasn't about denominationalism. It was just about Jesus. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else but Jesus. And the only message, I mean, really, for someone who's hungry, the only thing they care about is their next meal. That's it. It, that's not rocket science, brother. No, no. A dumb hit from Scott Higgins can figure that out, man. Yeah. So why can't the smart people do that, you know? And, uh, well, I tell you, brother, I, I, I've so come to appreciate you over the years. And uh, and your folks, have, you've supported us 
through the years. You've encouraged us. You bought our books. Uh, I think most of your church has read my books. What would you yeah. say to people? We tell them that we have, I have my four books out. My fifth one's coming uh, along, hopefully, far too yeah. long. What would you say to people watching this? Because you've read the books, uh, and here you are. You're in Illinois. You're not in Skowhegan. You're not in my little group here or anything. You're uh, not an outsider in the term of outsider, but outside of the, the realm of what I'm working with. Uh, what would you say to them about the books? Are, are they worth getting? Would, would, would they help anybody if they got the books? Oh, absolutely. I looked at your books, number one. Uh, these stories are real. They're your stories. You see God all throughout these stories. But number two, look at it as a gospel track. Give them out. Pass them out. Give them away to people. Stories that will encourage and bless people is what we did. In fact, I, I had told you recently, the only copy of the book that I had of the first book, I gave it away and sowed it as a seed into someone's life. And I Amen. thought, that's what you do. You, you, have, to, you have to invest in uh, things of eternity. And these books will, will do the job. The stories, the stories will speak for themselves. And it will all give glory to God. And they are an encouragement. And I, I would encourage every church to, to purchase the books and do just that. Well, I appreciate that. I know you didn't come on to do an ad for me, and I wasn't asking for that, but uh, it's nice to have somebody that's been from near the first, when my first book come out, you was one of the first to do it, because you uh, put the foreword in the first books. You've had all the books. You've seen all the books. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you know the stories, and uh, uh, you've seen the manuscripts on my last book, too. So oh, yeah. uh, prayerfully, that one's going to go, too. But uh appreciate all you guys do and, uh, and how much you love the Lord out there. and. And uh, the one thing I can, I just say, uh, no matter what your denomination is, you and I are brothers. And I, you know, I wouldn't care if you was charismatic, Nazarene, or Methodist, or what you are, because I, I guess so now people say, well, what are you? And I go, I don't know. They go, what do you mean you don't know? I said, I don't know. I, I don't fit any of your categories anymore, because what you consider important now, to me, don't mean a, don't mean a hell of beans. That's uh, right. I really don't care about those things. They go, well, you don't care about the Bible? I said, I love the Bible, and I have my own personal stuff. Right. I, you know, I'm not stupid, but I don't care about them enough, so I'm going to make them a big issue uh, when it comes to dealing with people, even other churches. And so when yeah. I travel, like the art church, I've been out there, and I do other ones, we've been asked back because we, we never touch on any of your, any of your denominational guidelines that, that anything people call the holy you know, grail or whatever for them to them it right. is a holy you know uh if it's a charismatic you know the tongues if it's calvinist you know how you save all of that we don't deal with any of that i just come in and share stories about how they can help the guy on the street that's out there looking for jesus and you don't even know it and uh i thank god for pastors like you and churches like you that have put hurting people above denomination and uh you, you ought to be patted on the back for that, brother. I'm very proud of you and what you're doing out there. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor. I mean, it, it really is the difference maker. No, no, more, no more drawing lines that divide us, but finding ways to unite us so that we could reach the hurting. That's what Amen. it is. Yeah. Well, Pastor, I want to tell you, I'm honored. You've been on my podcast. I'm honored. I call you Fred. And every once yes. in a while, you get a phone call for me. And I binge your ear to tell you this crazy thing I got in mind. What do you think, man? Or I did this stupid thing. What do you think? And it's always nice to have somebody to call and say howdy to. So I want to thank you for that. And all of you watching, I want to thank you all for watching, listening. Please go ahead and hit subscribe and hit like and share this with your friends. Uh, because when you do that, you're bringing money into the shelter. And until we get to my next podcast coming along, you all come back now here.